Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, August 14th, 2024 edition of the Sands and at Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, we got an interesting patch Tuesday today. Not the number of vulnerabilities, 92 vulnerabilities. That's what I would call somewhat around average. Nine of these vulnerabilities are critical. Where it gets really interesting is that three of the vulnerabilities were previously disclosed and six are already being exploited. When it comes to the exploited vulnerabilities. There's one that I mentioned yesterday. That's the Microsoft Office spoofing vulnerability. Well, and um, I'm proven wrong here. I figured uh, they won't be able uh, to patch it today. Apparently, they were working on this for a while. And yes, it has been patched. It's labeled here as publicly known, but not as exploited. There is an exploited remote code execution vulnerability in Microsoft Project. I don't see a lot of attacks against Microsoft Project, but certainly something that makes sense and in a target attack could certainly work quite well. We also have like a scripting engine memory corruption vulnerability. Uh, this one is also already being exploited. Uh, that's typically been exploited via the browser and the Windows auxiliary function driver for WinSock elevation of privilege vulnerability. So also exploited here, as well as other privilege escalation vulnerabilities in the kernel, uh, for example, and uh, well, yet another one sort of those Windows Mark of the Web Security feature bypasses. So that's where you download a file, you open it, and you're not being warned that you just downloaded the file. Another known but not yet exploited vulnerability is in the Windows Line Printer uh, daemon. That's uh, rated actually with a CVSS score of 9.8. Kind of odd that it's uh, only uh, labeled as important, uh, maybe because the temporal score is here lower. Uh, not really show, sure about that. This update also patches some of the issues that came up, I think, in the last patch where Windows Server in some versions had issues with some Windows Defender uh, features. So if you were affected by this, uh, this particular update should fix uh, this problem. There were some intermediate sort of uh, updates that were, I think, released a week or two ago that also addressed this particular problem, which was more sort of a regression from the last update. Now, depending on when you went to our website, uh, when Renato first made that table uh, live that he uh, always produces, there were in the beginning a number of vulnerabilities that weren't sort of assigned to anything. Uh, this is something that has uh, shown up in the last few months. And the reason this happens is that these are vulnerabilities affecting the Microsoft Mariner Linux distribution. This is the Linux distribution being used in Azure. There is really nothing that you have to do here. It should be applied to you within Azure. These vulnerabilities are Linux vulnerabilities. They're the normal open source vulnerability, so that's uh, why we don't really cover them here as part of the Microsoft Patch Tuesday, but they're included in some of the data feeds that we use uh, to create the table. And before I forget it, uh, we also have another critical vulnerability in the reliable multicast transport driver. That's you know one of those components that just keeps coming up. And NIST is now finalizing its principal set of encryption algorithm to withstand cyber attacks from quantum computers. They released a press release today with some details around it. So for general encryption, there is now the Crystal's Kyber algorithm being used. And the standard is being called MLKEM or module latted spaced key encapsulation mechanism. Then we also have an algorithm for digital signatures, and that's Crystal's Dilithium, or that's now MLDSA for module lattice based digital signature algorithm. As the you know, other DSA algorithms, there were also like older standards, basically that's sort of where that uh, 
acronym uh, comes from. And uh, then for digital signatures, there is also the Sphinx Plus algorithm, which is now called SLH DSH or the stateless hash based digital signature algorithm. So having these standards available now is important because that uh, gives you basically guidance what algorithms you should be using going forward. And of course, expect these algorithms also to show up in various libraries and such soon. And then a couple other vulnerabilities quickly. There is an update for the Sabix uh, network monitoring tool. Uh, the vulnerability being patched here could lead to leaking uh, passwords. There are also some code execution vulnerabilities, but uh, they do require already administrator privileges, even though these administrators may have restricted permissions. Still probably not such a big deal necessarily but they still assigned it a CVS score of 9.9. .9. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.